Now we'll investigate searching the file system with two very important commands, find and locate. Both commands perform the same function. They help you find files on the command line. There are some major differences between both commands. We'll discuss both commands and I'll show you the caveats that deal with those commands. First we're going to look at locate. Locate on first, when you first look at it and use it, seems like it would be the best command to use at the command line for finding files. But it does have some issues that we need to explain. It is very high speed and low impact searching. And it does that because it doesn't actually search the file system. It searches a database that was built the night before, a few hours before, and it searches that index for the files that you're looking for. Now if you think about that, that could cause a problem. It only updates once a day unless you manually update it or configure it to update more often. And if it only searches for files within that database, then you may miss files that have been newly created or, or it may give you false positives on files that were deleted after it was updated. So while it's very fast, it's not wholly reliable. Find, on the other hand, searches the entire directory structure. It does not depend on a database or index for its searching. Every time you issue the find command, it searches through the directory that you specify. While that may be slower, it's vastly more reliable than locate. And as you'll see, there are many interesting things you can do with the find command, which really make it the power horse of searching the file system. We'll look at a few of these various arguments we can pass to find and how they help us as administrators. So let's open up a command prompt and look at both these commands. To prepare for this lecture, I created a few files around the file system that we can search for. If you like to, and I suggest you do, create the same files that I have and then use the two commands to look through the file system to see if you can find the files. After that, investigate if you can find other files that may end in different extensions. Using find is really the only way that you'll become comfortable with searching from the command line. So before you get started, I suggest you type the cd command to make sure that you're back in your home directory, pwd to make sure that you're there. And then we're going to run the touch command. This is an example of the touch command that I ran to create files throughout the file system. So I type touch and then I told it in the music directory which is in student underneath student to create a file named song. And then I use the curly brackets and numbers with commas to specify that there should be a, a song file 1, song file 2, song file 3, song file 4, and then it should end in mp3. So I use that command to create the file. You can use this command to create the other files that you'll see used throughout this lecture. I'll clear out of there and I'll show you what I have created. I'll cd into music. So there are the four song files and then I also use that and changed a few of the parameters and I went up into documents and created some PDF files. To do this you would just modify change song to file, change mp3 to PDF and put it in the documents directory. I also created some files in temp so we could also look at it from the perspective of, let's say, the root user looking for files by a particular user. As you can see, here are the four files that I've created with the student account. All right, so the first command we'll use is locate. As I said in the introduction, locate is a very quick command that will search the file system. It will search an index of the file system looking for particular files. So I'll use that. Locate is very basic. I'll search for a particular file. If I type out the file name, locate quickly tracks down that file and gives me the full path to it. We can also use locate along with wildcards 
to search for f for files that we only know part of the name. Before I start using wildcards to search the file system with locate, I do want to point out a couple of things about the locate command. First of all, as I've said, locate uses a database or an index to search the file system. It does not search the file system real time. So before you start using the locate command, you want to update your database. And you can do that by using the sudo update db command. This will update the database. Locate updates the database daily. That's set up through something called a cron job, which every evening updates the database for locate. You'll have to update the, da the database manually to reflect those changes. This is one of the limitations of the locate command. I'll show you exactly what I mean as we go through. But after you've created your files, your MP3s, your AVIs, your PDFs, you want to make sure that you've updated the database so that the exercises work for you. I've already done that, but I'll do it again just to show you. So as you can see, the system takes a minute or two. This is a very small file system. Not much has changed, so the update command runs what seems like pretty swiftly. But on a larger system with many more files and many changes taking place, updating the database could take some time. All right, now that we've done that, now we can do, search for some wildcards. So I'll lose locate, and I'll search for files named MP3 on my system. Now you'll notice I'm using the double quotes around the item I'm searching for. I'm also using a wildcard. Remember, wildcards allow me to search for a string of characters. In this case, I'm basically telling the system, or the locate command, that I want to search for anything, any characters, and at the end it should have a dot and then mp3. The quotes protect the wildcard from the bash shell. The shell, seeing a seeing an argument like the asterisk will think it needs to interpret something and may not return the results that we anticipate. So when using wildcards, it's a, it's a good idea to quote the argument so that it's not interpreted by the shell. Looking at using wildcards in regular expressions in later lectures and quoting and double quoting will definitely be included in that. All right, so let's run this command. The system returns the full path to the files that end with mp3. Let me clear that. I'll up arrow and I'll modify it. And basically with this command I am saying I want to see any file that ends with 1.mp3. Anything can come before the 1. That doesn't matter. I'll press enter and as you can see it returns just the one song. Now I'll use locate to look for any files that have PDF. And you can see that many more files are returned because there are other files on the system besides the ones that I created earlier. This may be a good time to pipe the output of locate to a pager so I can scroll through these to see which one and I can use my J key and K key to move or the up arrow down arrow to move through the various items I see. Now if you remember I created some AVI files and put them in temp. I'll ask locate to find those now. star.avi and I'll press enter. And interestingly enough nothing comes back. We know that the files are there, and we can see that the files are in the temp directory. This is another little caveat with the locate command. The locate command is configured not to look in certain directories, so it's not even going to bother to look in the temp directory. If I open up the uh, update db comp file, I can see a list of directories 
under this prune path parameter that will not be searched by the locate command. So even after you run the update, any files located in these directories will not be part of that update. And as you can see, temp is one of the directories, and that's why we don't see the AVI files. The other item that I want to point out about locate, and this emphasizes that whole updating of the database. Right now we have four PDF files in my documents directory. What I will do is remove one of those files. So I'll select star.1 PDF to be removed and it's been deleted as we can see. Now I'm going to ask locate to find that file again and I'll pipe it through less and as we can see if you look up here locate once again did not search the slash home slash student documents folder to see what was in there it searched its database and as far as its database is concerned the last time it was updated there was a file one dot pdf in the file system even though I've deleted it and it no longer exists, the locate command acts as if the file is there. We'll look in the directory to confirm that the file1 file has been deleted. If I want locate to reflect the change, I would have to run the update db command. Now, if I run the locate command again, press enter, you'll notice in my output, file one is gone. So this is one of the major points I want to get across about the locate command. Many times you can get false positive like you just saw in the last example. Conversely, because of the features of update, locate may not find files that were recently created. I'll give you an example of that. What I'll do now is touch a new file. And as we can see, the new file is in the directory. And I'll run the locate command again. And if we look at the output from locate, we see that its database does not contain the information about this file that's in the documents directory, so the output does not contain that information. So I may miss that file even though it's recently been created. The other thing that you have to keep in mind about any file in the Linux file system is that there is the issue of case sensitivity. So if you have a search that you're looking for that does have an issue with case, you probably want to use the I option, case insensitivity. That option will allow you to find will allow you to find files that contain both upper and lower case in the name.